Hi everyone, welcome back to Be Rich. Today I want to talk about uh, something which I read in the Financial Times. It's about a problem which has been persisting in our globe and it's been persisting from the 1970s and it's steadily only getting worse. And no matter how many crises we have had, one after another, one after another, the world seems to be ignoring it and if we are at our own peril when it comes to this. And I'm not talking about uh, global tensions, I'm not talking about geopolitical things. I'm talking about the simple concept of debt and our long-term debt seems to be on the rising trend for the very long term. So I'll ask Rupesh to share this graph and it shows you clearly where we have been, where we are and where we are going. Public debt I do understand. Public debt is required because government needs to borrow because governments are the only ones who can take on these big projects, spend on infrastructure and uh, provide us the backbone for economies to grow and make those initial investments in the long term and to make those long term investments they need to borrow a lot of money and they finance it through public debt i get that but the alarming thing is the private debt private debt are people like companies like you and me all of us and that has been at an alarming trend and has been going up recently me and anand spoke on money page about this and we spoke specifically about uh, rbi trying to grapple with credit card and credit debt in india yes this generation, Generation Z, has been having it much better than previous generations compared to Generation Millennials, compared to Generation Boomers, Generation X. If you compare any previous generation, Generation Z, at the same point, from the age of around 16 to 26, they seem to be faring much better than these other previous generations did in terms of job opportunities, in terms of salary, in terms of wage increment, they seem to be doing much better. This I'm not saying just offhand. This is based on an article which I read in The Economist, which was analyzing generational shifts and changes as far as wages are concerned and jobs are concerned. Yes, Generation Z has been labeled as anxiety generation because this generation seems to be profoundly being affected by anxiety and depression far more than any other previous generation. This generation also, thanks to social media, seems to be disengaging from the world more and more through not maintaining human-to-human -human contact and relying more and more to being online. In the article, it said from the year 2000 to now, you can see the trend where people are at least interacting an hour has dropped down to now to around less than half an hour, meaning face-to-face -face human interaction. That is what this generation is going through. This is all psychological, I do understand. But on the flip side of it is, they seem to be having no problem in opportunities of jobs, no problem in opportunities of money. And this is very apparent on the way the generation Z seems to be spending all the extra cash they seem to be generating. It's a very interesting article in The Economist. Please do have a look at it and read it. And I would love your comments on this and what you think your views are. A copy of the same article, I think, is also available on the Mint or in um, Business Standard. I'm not sure. But I'll ask Rupesh to drop a link to that article down below. And you can, guys can read it and you can come back to me on this. So why was I talking about this? Well, this trend of debt and debt consumption, if you see from generation to generation with the graph which I had previously shown, is being on the uptick. And there seems to be no end to it. And this is not only true in developed countries like in the US and Europe or the developed countries. This is very much true in the emerging markets. India is also grappling with this exponential growth in debt and our desire, especially in the younger generation, to consume lots and lots of credit and lots and lots of debt. In my generation, in the previous generation, especially in India, savings was one of our cornerstones. And we used to rely heavily on savings because we did not have any investment opportunities in terms of mutual funds. We did not have index funds. Either we invested in purely FD, keeping money in the bank. And those of us who could afford a little bit more would venture into gold. And those of us who can afford even more than that would venture into real estate. Even real estate, believe it or not, in our, my generation, previous generations, my brother's generation, was prohibited because it was very expensive because the earnings was not into what the current generations seem to be enjoying. So it is very surprising that as soon as this kind of opportunities have erupted across the world, investment opportunities and growth opportunities, very strangely enough, what has also erupted is the consumption of debt. Not only public debt in countries saddling on more and more debt, but private debt is also piling on. And we most of us would have think we would have learned our lessons after what happened in 2007, 2008, when the world went through its financial crisis, when the world economy almost came to a grinding halt. Then we had to get into printing free money 
at zero interest and to restart the economy, to rebuild trust in the banking system and rebuild trust in the global economy and global currency and world trade. We had to do that globally. We all pumped in cash in huge volumes of money trying to re-engage. But then what happened is we became addicted to this kind of free money which is floating around and we started assuming this is the status quo. Fast forward to what is happening right now. Inflation has gone out of control. And this brings me to what our Fed chair has said. He said inflation seems to be not showing the signs he wants to see. So he's not going to be cutting rates anytime soon. While the ECB has shown a different shade and they seem to be thinking, at least in Europe, inflation seems to be where they want it to be and they may be considering rate cuts. As far as the world's largest economy, America, is concerned, they do feel it needs to wait for a little while longer. So the problem for Generation Z is they graduated at the time when free money was the name of the game. It was a norm of society. Everyone and everywhere you could get free money and you could get loans very cheap. And this generation has grown up on this binge of free debt. And now the world has changed very dramatically in the last year or so. Interest rates have gone up. Loans rates have gone up. Credit card loans have gone up. And everything which you think was cheap and was for free is not cheap anymore and it's not free anymore. And when is it going to become free and cheap is the biggest question they seem to be asking the Fed. Well, the Fed seems hold your horses. So this is a complex problem if you look at it. What is fueling this inflation, if you see, is just not the fact that there's a lot of surplus or there's a lack of surplus or there's too much cash or there's a lack of cash. There's a whole, by reading these two articles, you'll come to understand the way we, our generation of human beings are thinking, the next crop of leaders. And these are the next leaders who are going to be taking over the CEOs of these big companies. In the article, if you read in The Economist, you'll see they talk about percentages of companies which are being run by Generation Zs now. So the world is in a very strange place. And with this current climate, while we're facing these macroeconomic headwinds, we're facing geopolitical tensions, and we have a generation of young youth who are entering the workforce or in the workforce who have no concept of living in a world where you are charged for things and things are not for free. This fueling with already the existing debt in the public realm and in the private realm, if you combine it, we are in due for a shock if we do not see change in our course as human beings and our relationship with debt. The reason why I picked this topic to talk about is we have all been waiting for this so-called chokehold on interest rate to be released. I do understand that. The reason why we are, want this chokehold to be released is because we are used to this free cash flow happening. But is it prudent for this chokehold to be released is the question which I want you to ponder on. Today was a holiday for the market, so there's no news in the market. So I thought I'll take this opportunity to give you some food for thought today about our relationship with debt and borrowings. Thanks for watching the program today, guys, and I'll see you in the next one soon. Bye. It's a great privilege and honor that so many of you in thousands have subscribed to my channel and have supported me. I have written two books in English, The Alchemy of Money and Ordinary Stocks, Extraordinary Profits. These books are published by us and are ready. If you want to procure a copy, send us a message to the WhatsApp number given below and my team would respond to you. If you want an Amazon Kindle copy, you can click the link below. Finally, those who wish to consult with me can send a mail to berichenglish at gmail.com. Once again, I thank you for your support. If you like this video, press the subscribe button of my channel, hit the like button and turn on the bell notification.